Hey guys, uh, we are out here at the grasslands and I am excited because I finally have my Helix 6 Precision Barrel all adjusted. I've done my, my ladder tests. I have worked up a load with H4350, 44.6 grains of uh, uh, powder and then we are pushing 123 grain bullets. I could go a little bit faster with the 120 grains, but the 123s actually had a lot lower standard deviation. Uh, I am loading these things at 2.235 uh, inches. Uh, that's the base to ogive measurement. And we're gonna take it out a little ways. I've got a target here at 100 yards, and then we're gonna start stepping it back because I really wanna push this thing, see what it can do, and this is a very, very lightweight setup. So you can see that I've got um, smoke composites has just been so good. Uh, they sent me this stock uh, with the cheek riser and the carbon grip. That is a new product from them. They're always working on making new stuff. Uh, so huge shout outs to, to smoke composites. This thing is, is just smooth, silky smooth, so light. Love it. Uh, the cheek riser, again, very light and it makes it so adjustments are very easy. I think there's just four screws here with eighth inch uh, hex nuts and you can just adjust it very easy. Give it a cant if you need. Up top, I have my Vortex. Uh, I believe this is the Diamond, Be oh no, sorry, this is the Viper PST Gen 2. And uh, we're gonna be running this thing at 15X. And then your XLR magnesium chassis, the MG 2.0. This thing, ultra, ultra light, love it. And then of course, courtesy of uh, Helix 6, they actually provided the Trigger Tech primary trigger in here. This thing I have dialed back to about one pound. It is ultra light so I can get that nice uh, surprise break every time that I fire. And then I have my Spartan Precision bipod up here just again ultra light everything that's going into this adventure race trying to just make sure that i shave off as much weight as possible i did go a little bit heavy on the scope because i just wanted that magnification so i could hit those targets at distance and then i did end up buying from cabela's i bought some steel rings and i just didn't like how they fit on here and so i swapped these out i believe these are tally aluminum and they are much lighter. They were easy to adjust my scope on. So really, really nice. Again, big shout out to Helix 6. We're gonna be putting this 16 and a half inch, 6.5 Creedmoor barrel to the test. I asked them to cut it shorter because there are uh, some articles out there and you can go read them online that allow you to do short barrel 6.5. It does shoot very, very well. Small single digit standard deviations. I've got a titanium muzzle brake on this thing and we're just gonna have some fun. Uh, today, it looks like we have about five, five mile an hour winds, and they're actually running perpendicular to where we are now, so I think it should be really, really good. We're gonna get out there, we're gonna shoot this thing, and then uh, we'll let you know how the 6.5 Creedmoor barrel from Helix 6 performs. Okay, so. When we took our first couple shots, uh, it looked like we were off uh, about four inches low, two inches to the right. So I adjusted my scope and shot another test one, center punched that sucker. So we're gonna start to just shoot a couple more groups, see how this thing really performs at 100, make sure it's shooting bug holes, and then we'll start to lengthen it back out. So I'm gonna load up uh, just, another, just another couple here. Since I haven't adjusted it since I talk, took that shot that hit in the center. So we're going to see about putting a, a three shot group together.
hammers. Love it. Uh, it's soft shooting, just a, a beautiful setup. A lot of people think, oh, if I have a, a really heavy rifle, it's going to mitigate all that recoil. And you know what? Shooting 6.5 Creedmoor, the recoil is still not much of an issue. So you don't need the super heavy gun. I can still spot my shots. And I think we're just about ready to take it out to 100 or a, a couple hundred and then start to stretch his legs further. And I've got a piece of steel out there, so what the heck. Let's just, let's just shoot this thing. Like it, love it. Let's go. Uh, let's go check it out. So, as we take a look at this target again, it's only at 100 yards. I'm not, uh, you know, the bag that I have has this really lightweight fill, which is nice. And I wish I had a bag that was heavier to be a little bit more stable. But at 100 yards, boom! This is a one-inch dot right here. Just just killing it at 100 yards uh killing it at 100 yards and again i am not the world's best shooter so uh thank you john for uh, sending me this barrel i'm gonna try and do it do it some justice but uh you can see here are our first couple shots uh about two inches to the to the right and uh, uh four inches low so we brought that up and then i adjusted one more click uh each and uh, then I shot this center group, uh, the center one right here. And then uh, this was my next shot, and this is my very last shot that you saw. That is a pretty respectable group. That is looking like a half inch tops, half inch tops at 100 yards, which is pretty sweet. And then just pulling the trigger, not even trying very hard. Boom, right there. Phew. So. We're going to move this thing back uh, to about 200. Uh, I am liking that. Uh, I'm going to put some some uh, smaller steel. I believe this is a uh, six inch steel plate. Eh, roughly six, seven inches of steel. Uh, we're going to move this back, uh, try and shoot some some one MOA groups uh, there at 200, move it back to 300. So we're going to have we're going to have some fun. So let's uh, let's go do it. So, had some fun. Uh, I hit this steel. You can see the new impact slightly to the left because uh, it would be this direction. Uh, it looks like all of these, because we've got about a seven mile an hour wind, and uh, you can see that it hit a little to the left. My first was a little low, second one just fine. And then I smacked this one and it twisted that up but you can see that is a three inch uh, piece of steel 200 yards i think the first one went off the uh just right off to the left because i was basically holding center and with the wind it, it went off to the side the next time i just held left or right edge of this plate boom nailed it um i took two shots <laughs> here and you can see uh, aiming at this little one inch target at, at 200 yards is tough but at 200 yards that's a may, maybe a one inch group because these are five inches per uh, five squares per inch and that is still under gosh that may even be three quarters of an inch at 200 yards and then while this target was flailing in the wind at an angle i took a shot at this uh, red bullseye here and you can see the center punch that sucker uh so this this round 
uh, even in, I mean, in light wind, obviously, uh, it does great. And I am just super happy with it. So we're gonna take down this, this paper target and we're going to back it up to 300 yards. We're gonna be shooting at, again, these same pieces of steel, just trying to make it go a little bit further, a little bit more accurate. So I, so far, am very, very happy with how this thing is shooting. So let's go bring it back to some more distance. I'm gonna take some more data, some notes, and then we're gonna go back to the lab. All right, let's do it. All right, uh, we've got our, whew, bug. we've got our three targets set up and I didn't bring the paint can out so I can't spray them down. I did also find this block of wood out here and as you can see, the car is a little bit away. So we're gonna be shooting. I actually have no idea what the distance is, so we'll find out when we get back to the car. And the wind seems to have died down just a little bit, so I don't think we're gonna have to really hold any wind. But again, these are only, these 123 green ELD match bullets are only moving at about uh, 2710 feet per second. So they're not rocketing out of this thing, but for a 16 and a half inch barrel, it is doing phenomenal. Uh, it's, it's surpassed my expectations. Again, at 200 yards with the Mirage out here, because it's like 90 degrees, I could barely see that little one inch dot. And so it was really great to be able to shoot less than an inch at 200 yards. I mean, this thing just, just tack driver. And again, the recoil is so minimal that uh, titanium muzzle brake makes everything a joy. And I think this is probably one of my favorite guns. I do have a Desert Tech SRS A2. And I mean, that thing is heavy and I love the bullpup. I've got a couple barrels for it. One in 6.5, one in 2.23. And that one is really fun to shoot in both calibers. But this one is my my new hike many miles gun. And like I said, most of the weight of a gun is gonna be in the barrel. People that are shooting these PRS matches, I listen to VP Precision Podcast. These people are running like 28 inch barrels, stupid heavy. And you see people out at the adventure races and they're also running these, these big barrels. And I gotta tell you, I, I think you can do the same with a lot less barrel. And just the, the quality of this one has been phenomenal. Again, I was really frustrated our last time out. We did our chronograph stuff and the, uh, it wasn't hitting the target at all where I thought it was. Turns out I was a scope and I have since corrected the issue because now, as you can see, this thing is just nailing them, driving them in. So we're gonna go check our distance and then we are going to put some rounds down range on steel. And of course we'll have to listen for the impact because I've only got one GoPro. So. As you guys can see, I am trying to hog every bit of shade from this car every single bit of shade i'm gonna load this magazine up again i loaded 50 rounds 44.6 grains of h4350 i did a ladder test with varget you guys can watch that other video but the h4350 just had some really nice consistency and let's check this out on the thing holy crap that's far out there Let's see what we got. Uh, I got a lot of Mirage. I can't even see. 350. Okay. Can't even see the the three inch target at 350. So odds of us hitting it small, but I got 35 rounds of ammo. So here we go. Let's plug it into the Kestrel Ballistics app. 350 tells us I'm the only living thing out here 350 yards we're gonna dial one and a half mils basically a mil of, or a, a tenth of wind 
So if I was at 1.1, I need to go to 2.6. And see how that does. One and a half mils of wind. Right, let's get after it. Okay. Whew. Oh yeah. There's my tripod that I left out there because I'm an idiot. Or steel targets. There you go. That can't be. Is that it? Oh no, I'm looking way far away. There they are. I was like, oh my gosh, they're so tiny. Nope, we're fine. Okay, we've got some serious mirage. Right to left, I can see that three inch target, and I can see the hits on the big one. Let's have some fun. There we go. Oh, flies everywhere. Stupid. All right, we're going big plate. Impact. Oh man, that was like a center punch. That's where, right where I was holding. Ha! I flipped the plate over. Plate's still hanging, but I knocked the the splash knocked that piece of wood over. So, oh well. All right, let's shoot the four-inch plate. This thing is doing such a great job catching my brass. Four-inch plate at 350 yards. Impact. Swung it over to the right. Let me see if I can still get it. Impact. You can just, I just love that. That ding of the steel. Oh, sexy. Sexy. As fun as, you know, for the first couple years of my shooting career, I only shot paper. We would go out to front sight firearms training in Nevada and we would shoot paper targets. And then one day I got the chance to shoot some steel targets and I was like, oh, this is amazing. So I, I just love it so, so much. So let's, uh, let's continue. Again, the, the Helix 6 barrel just smacking it. Dead nuts consistency. Let's go for that little one with my last round in this mag. Oh, just under it. Okay. Like I said, I am able to spot my shots with this. You know what? We'll just leave the mag in. Uh, with this, with this 6.5, even though it's a light barrel, the 6.5 definitely has some some force behind it. Spotting your shots, still no issue whatsoever so i love it let's burn it up oh. it also helps last night i did uh, level my scope i realized that after the last range visit the scope was slightly canted i still haven't shot a tall target test but based on how this thing is performing here at distance i think we're good i think we're good Side is I have to come off the gun, Oops, do my follow through, look like I know what I'm doing. It looks like it hit a little bit to the left on that one.
mirage up there is killer. You can see it moving right to left. It's about a 40, 45 degree angle. So you got about a five mile an hour wind. It says hold a tenth, but I'm just holding center. Uh, I'll hold literally, I'll try a tenth. Center punched it. There we go. Oh, I knocked it off the hanger. Ah! All right, so far, only one, only one miss, and that was going for the small one. Let's try that small one again, just, just for the heck of it. All right. Oh my gosh, I gotta line my vertical crosshair up with the hook that it's on. It's it's so small, it's so small. Uh, consistently though. That four inch plate at 350, no problem. Here's the four inch plate. Oh, I knocked the chain off of that one. Oh, it's still hanging though. Still hanging, it's on a hook. All right, you know what? Let's make this the last round of the day. See if we can take, take these targets down. They're each hanging off of one hook. Impact, but could not take it off. All right, and one more on that other one. Let's get it. Let's get it, boy. Impact. All right. So, a couple things. No issues at all with primers. We got a little bit of. A little bit of ejector wipe but not on all of them that may be from an old an old round it looks like all the primers are being hit perfect everything is great there are no extra signs of pressure gun is just on uh, last time we had some issues with the Kestrel and I think that was because we didn't have good data the better data you have the better your guns gonna shoot and I just love it. That's the, the science part of this that I love. So once again, I just wanna put a huge thank you out to John at Helix 6. You can check out that sweet, sweet, sweet barrel right there. That thing is fantastic. And then uh, props to the guys over at, at Smoke Composites. Uh, again, the, the rubber pad edition, so very nice, just makes it really soft. And then XLR hooked me up with this Element chassis, love them. And then I did go the extra mile, I bought the folding stock adapter from them, just because it, it just makes portability so much better. So I like it. Uh, again, this is my new adventure race gun. Love this thing, so uh, more coming at you guys next time. All right, this is uh, Sensei Wax signing off from the range at Pawnee National Grasslands. I'll check you guys out later.